can't find the right Gantt chart visual for your Power BI report, watched all the previous videos on Gantt chart visuals on my channel and thought, Mwah. well, I got the ultimate visual for you today. Granted, you will need some skills to master this, but once you do, it opens up a world of possibilities. I'm of course talking about the Deneb visual. So the Deneb visual is not your usual visual as you would see in any of the other videos that I've already covered. So the Deneb visual uses a coding language in order to create visuals. Now this coding language is called Vega or Vega Lite and there is information available for you if you start with opening up the Deneb visual. So you can download that in the App Store of course and you can even hover over an empty space and click on add visual. And I'm using the new on object visual and it's still somewhat unfamiliar with me so bear with me if I click on the wrong places. Um, down below you have these three buttons here, uh, get more visuals and just type in Deneb and you will get this lovely little uh, icon. So about that Deneb visual and Vega and Vega Lite. Vega and Vega Lite are an open source language and there is more information that can be found online. As it mentions on this page, it's the grammar of interactive graphics. Well, that sounds lovely and there's a lot of examples here on this page already. This is a coding language for visuals. And what it does, it gives you the option to generally code anything that you would like to have on screen. There is even a very nice try online button here. And let me just open that in a new tab and we'll see what we can do with the Vega editor. Now, be aware there's Vega Lite for easy visualization and then there's Vega for the more complex stuff and we'll get to an example of complex stuff in a moment but if you start scrolling down in this page there is examples of different types of visuals so and there is additional links and there's research papers and there's a whole lot of information and if you're like me and you start uh, looking at Deneb examples in LinkedIn or in YouTube, where you're currently at, of course, there is examples of people doing things with Vega that, uh, for me, blow my mind. So let's have an example of this code here. I copy this and I go to the Vega editor and I can remove all this information and I can just paste this in here and if I click on run I get an example of what I'm seeing here. Important thing to know is that there's different layers of the information in here. So there's X and there's a Y axis and there is a mark which basically tells you what kind of visual you're seeing. I can change this to a line and it automatically updates to a nice line. Um, I can even change colors. I can change that there is a, I can add data labels. I can do a lot of things with this uh, visual editor. Uh, and there is so much that you can do uh, with this uh, visualization editor. There is even a out of the box Gantt chart that you can work with. And again, here is the specific JSON script that you can use. Um, which tells you what uh, what is inside the data and what can be done with the data. Um, so let's copy this and see how that reflects in the Vega editor. So once again, we have a bar mark, but this is horizontal now, and you have the X and the Y, uh, the X and the Y, and you have an X two, which basically tells us that we have a start of that task and we have an end of that task. So it wouldn't make sense if this is a line because we won't know what the line looks like, right? Oh, it's, ooh, that actually is quite nice. I didn't expect that. So there is a bar for now. Now, this is just a very simple example and you can use this example inside uh, Power BI as well. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to copy this and we're going to go to our Power BI. Inside Power BI, be aware that there is a nice introduction to the visual. Create your visual clicking on the three dots and on the edit button. Now be aware that that isn't the brush icon, the one that I used multiple times. Um, it is the edit button here. Clicking on that will open up a new experience, which is interactive and will help you guide you through the different steps that you need to take for your uh, visual. First thing that uh, Denim actually needs is it needs data. So let's add a task name. Let's add a start and let's add a finish. Those were the things that we needed based on the example that we had. Let's start with a Vega Lite template and it's going to be an empty template. I click on create and here you see that it takes the data from the data set. Now there's different layers. Now let's see. Now let's see how that lines up to what we're seeing here. So we have the data and then we have these values here. So let's try and get that inside our solution right away. So we're not going to use layers. We are going to use the bar itself. So we have a task, we have the start and we have the end date and let's visualize that. All right, so there is an issue with our data. And I do know that this type of date hierarchy is not accepted. So instead of the date hierarchy, we're just going to use the values that we have here. Very interesting to see. And if we make this temporal, yes, I knew I found it somewhere. So temporal means that it has something to do with time. And because the example didn't have time in it, uh, and you can hear from my enthusiasm, this is just like magic. Here, have a look. That looks great, right? Where you have the different tasks and you have the different lines. And of course, you can sort this, you can do all kinds of things. But to keep the speed in this video, let me show you an example of what some other user has already created based on the Denep uh, visual and on his own uh, knowledge of the Vega language. So David has created this kind of visual for your uh, Gantt. And doesn't that look amazing? The key thing in this visual that struck me right away was the example of dependencies. Because you hardly ever see dependencies within the solution of a Gantt chart visual. There are some, but they are scarce. Um, a thing to know about this visual is that there is a lot happening here. And you can have a look at what is happening actually by clicking on the edit button here. And what it will tell you is that it's using the Vega language, not the Vega light. So bear in mind, this is more advanced than the light language. Um, and there is information going about um, column lengths, about uh, progress columns, about Gantt width, about length, about the today date. There is a whole lot of information in here and I went on a call with David and he explained it uh, to me very crystal clear, but that was half a year ago before I started to move to Groningen and I basically lost the recording. So I'm a bit lost in what actually is within this solution and um, I am not a coder probably like most of you. So in the case that you want to create such a beautiful Gantt chart like David has done, but you're not familiar with coding language and you get a bit scared about the Vega light and the Vega examples that others have done, I want to help you out coding your own stuff with Vega and Vega light. Let me introduce you to 
Vicky Vega. So Vicky Vega is a Chat GPT GPT. Uh, I don't know if that's the way how you're supposed to call it, but this is a GPT model that I trained specifically to assist you in creating Vega Lite JSON coding um, for Power BI visuals. So let's ask Viggy uh, how to create a GAN chart. Uh, here we go. And once you ask the simple question like, I need a GAN chart visual based on tasks, start and end dates inside my Power BI table, Viggy starts giving you advice on how to create it. I trained Vicky to be very friendly and I trained I trained her to be very precise on her responses. So apart from writing only the JSON code as it is on top here where it has our start end date task name and all the information that we need, she also tells us what is within the solution. So I already know that that data needs to be um, the data set, and that is something that she um, that is something that she does incorrect all the time. I don't know how to solve that yet, but if I copy and paste this information and I go back to my report, I can start working with Vega, and I can start adding my different table, and I can add a project name, start and an end date. And I can start with light and I create an empty value. And instead of working with layers, I'm going to add the bar mark. And I see that I need to use the project name. And there's IntelliSense inside the solution. Um, so we have an easy way to work with the solution start is actually start and it's not start date and end is end date and if I click on OK we still have that issue with the start date not showing as a date but as a date hierarchy and that counts for the end date as well. And here we have our two projects. They have different values. And that is exactly how many projects we have in the Viki table. But we also have the Viki table with the percent complete. So why don't we ask Viki to also present us with the percent complete value? So in order to do that, I would like to give her the example data. Uh, or I will give her a message that I have a percent complete in here as well. So let's talk with Viggy again. I also have a percent complete. So I ask Vicky. Uh, I also have a percent complete column in my data. I'd like you to show that inside the bar of the projects. And let's do that with correct spelling um, as a darker color. Uh, and let's see Vicky do her work. And I can already see that she is introducing the layer mode again, because we have two different marks. We have a general bar and we have the percent complete bar. Now, remember in my example, I didn't tell her anything about how to calculate that percent complete. So I'm very curious to see how she responds to that uh, solution. Uh, this represents the complete state uh, portion, which is very nice. Adjust this field. Um, the completion date. Ah, I don't have the completion date. Um, I might need to introduce that to my model. We'll create a custom column, which we'll call completion date because that is the date that we currently have. And 
Let's see if this works. And that looks about right where we have the completion date is 50%. That is roughly in between those dates and 25%. Could that be true? It looks good. So let's try this out. Complete, apply. After some brainstorming, it wasn't my incorrect. Uh, it wasn't Vicky that was incorrect. Uh, the completion date wasn't part of my data. So let me correct that by adding the completion date and clicking on the date hierarchy completion. And here we see the completion date is on top. Uh, let's try that with the original because I think originally it was still correct. It was just me not including the data inside the solution. And there you have it. So it was a user error. So let's go back to the report and let's see that. So this is what Vicky did for us. And of course you can fine tune it. And of course you'll need to have some information about your data and about the content that you want to show. But the fact that I was able to create this based on a GPT model is to me amazing. Um, you can try it out yourself by clicking on this link. And of course that link doesn't work because you're looking at a video, but I'll have a QR code at the end to try it out yourself. You will need to have a GPT plus subscription. I'm very excited for the GPT future or the AI future. Um, you might know that because you read my blog as well, but that's it for now. Thanks for watching and maybe you'll enjoy any of the other videos that are on screen right now.